put a laceration round your face so it's visible. No open coffin or rock. So I'm here with the famous, the the famous, the infa infamous battle rapper. Can you introduce yourself, David, as your stage name? Uh, Dizzy Disaster. Dizzy Disaster. Oh, Zoom does say that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, how she, well, how she know my name? Okay. <laughs> but it is this. All right. So let's get into it. How did you break into the music industry? All right, hold on, sorry. All right, there we go. So, um, I, I guess I, I was just uh, so you know, as any as most of the artists, you know, they started started out being in the streets, and you know, eventually it's just the, the hip hop culture is adaptive of being in the streets. So it's just it was always around me, and I, I just always caught the niche for rhyming, and I. I actually um, didn't grow up with my pops, but when I first ever knew who he was, around seven, eight years old, I um, I, I knew what, like he got involved with music. So I just I wanted to start rhyming, I guess you know. <laughs> but um, game. yeah, started battling, um, and that's that you know that's 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 where the freestyling came out of is, is through battling. And, and cracking jokes, you know, being able to turn those jokes into the form of a rhyme and, and, and you know, really get some bread off of it, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you kind of wanted the best to ever do it. I mean, truth be told, and we don't see battle rappers, not, not, not anymore. You know, the internet has made it easy, but like people like you who's severely talented, you know, that's a, that's a lost art to battle rap. So, See, I used to I, I did the battling before, like it, it, it is like no disrespect to the battle scene now, because yo, let me tell you, like I have friends that, that still do it to this day and and they man, let me tell you, the, the, it's it's different now. I, I came from the era of like, you know, get on stage and, and go go round for round until you get to the top person and mm -hmm. and it's like, oh shit, we don't know who won. Yo, we gotta go to the crowd, crowd, who who you think won, you know, that's what I'm used to. Nowadays, it's like, yo, you have five months to gather up any information, write a whole well-orchestrated uh, <laughs> performance, you know, and, and and whoever got the best performance, I guess, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> right. So then, like you said, the battle rapping has changed tremendously since back in the day. What when you say who was your who was your hardest battle? My, my hardest battle? Um, mm -hmm. The most difficult. Oh, I would say this. This um, what's up, Mario? I would say this artist named Lyrical. He's actually uh, he, he uh, I, I believe right now he works with um, uh, in Harvard doing musical theory. Um, but his name is Lyrical. He, he shout out to Lyrical, man. He's he was he's still a beast to this day. But I remember we went we went so hard that it was one of those moments to go to the crowd, and, and I remember that's when Mr. Peter Parker. Um, he he was out in the Boston area at the time working with um Jam ninety four five, and um, so he was one of the special hosts and um, guest judge, and then that was when Elite from the Rough Riders, the producer, was there. And they were like, "Yo, like, yo," and I was young then, so they were like, "Yo, this this young kid like coming up on stage like like doing it up." You know, but they gave it to him because it was his crowd. You know, that's his. That was his scene. So, but it was a well lesson learned. But he he laid it down on me. Let me tell you that humbled me down. <laughs> Listen, at least you were honest. You said he laid it down on me. Okay, so uh, yeah. <laughs> you've worked like you've set the stage on fire with the likes of Beanie Siegel, Cannabis, Keith Murray, Redman, Eric Sermon, Buddha Monk, Capadonna, Prospect, and Armageddon from the Terror Squad. Like, how did you even get connected? So, um, and, and it goes well, well more extensive than that, but it was really like, you know, my boy, Jimmy Kane, uh, vice president of Wu-Tang management. He, um, as I said, like I, I was, I was a young kid on the come up and he seen that what I wanted to do and he had an avenue, but he's, he was more focused on a different aspect. Whereas at, at the time, you know, it wasn't really a label thing because he was pushing special teams 
that OG, and you know that's that was a self motivated machine as it is. You know what I'm saying? So he wasn't really thinking of putting on a young new artist like that. So he and then he goes, wait a minute, I'm running this club right now. Um, how do I how do I incorporate both that and him? Yo, gave me a budget. He said, here's a list of all these artists. Start hitting them up. Do what you do. And I started calling all these artists, and instead of asking them for verses, I was like, hey, how about I book you for a show? Right. You know what I mean? And then when I book them for a show, I hustle them while they're there. Like, yo, I got this dude here right now for the night. Let's get verses, blah, 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 blah. Facilitating it. And, and these dudes started seeing my hustle. So they started giving me what I call blessings. You know what I mean? Because I never I never go around to somebody, yo, this dude hooked me up with something for free or blah, blah, blah. That's the worst thing that you could ever do because that now that, you know, you're chasing clout. With, with me, I call it the lessons, you know? Mm -hmm. I, like with Sean Price, for instance, that was like one of my most biggest blessings that I could have ever encountered in, throughout my career. So like you, said, able, you were you know. kind of like the hustle man, but you were talented, which kind of like a person who knows poker, but everybody don't know you know poker, so you coming to win no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you knew the, you knew the the game, but what about the business side of things? So and you see, that's where I went. I go. I went wrong with a lot of things, like <clears throat> being where I am right now. Like I still got a lot of time. Don't don't get it twisted. But <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I messed up a a, a, a couple of different, you know, situations that could have really been prosperous for me yeah. had I understood the business aspect of it as much as I, I I would like. Let's say today, for instance. Right. I know. I know not to be reactive in certain situations because it won't be beneficial to me you know what i'm saying like i guess they say with age comes wisdom <laughs> well that's what they say <laughs> listen i still make mistakes to this day okay and i'm old all right so you started during a time where they were doing artist development and i, I spoke to a publicist yesterday who was big on artist development so when you came out like what did that look like for you um so at, at the time like that's that i had a lot of people coming up to me and and they're like oh you know you a light-skinned brother and you know coming up to the game like yo the game's looking for something like that i've had labels hit me up on some shit like oh we want to push you like ll cool j and you know you you know blah 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 blah. not like so much like drake but more hip-hop like you know horror but but for the for the ladies too and uh and, and, and everybody just tries to manipulate you, and and it's like it, I, I I don't fall victim, and I haven't, you know. But at the same time, I never really truly invested in myself as much as I'm I'm ready to do right now. Okay, all right. So, what has stood out to you in the now that you wish you could have utilized back then? Sean Price. <laughs> Everything so, go back to Sean Price, okay? No, 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 no. It's it's not for nothing. It's not for nothing. But the, and the only reason why I say it is because you know, first and foremost, he's one of my my favorite MCs ever, mm -hmm. and I dealt with him on such a level that no one would be able to comprehend. Wow. And it's like, and, and to and for me, not, I didn't even truly until he did pass away, and that's why, like, even when he did pass away, I. You, you, a person like and not to say that you know people were looking for that but like i ain't post nothing in, in in regards to trying to ride off of that wave you know what i mean like you ain't see me like oh rest in peace and then post my my track with him mm, yeah i let it, i let it yeah i let it do what it do you know why because that's that's he he really get, like even capadonna Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been I, I know him on a personal level and he's given me so many jewels that that molded me as as a young man first and foremost and an artist because I met him at such a crucial point in my my growth and development mm -hmm. you know Wu-Tang is coming well some members from Wu-Tang coming to Charlotte uh soon will you be with that will you be with the group when they come so actually, I just was talking to Jimmy Kane, and I actually had to give him a call after this because he did call me earlier. But I was in the in the midst of a of a different engagement with a client of mine, so I actually had to call him back. You just reminded me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but now they're they at the Webster Hall tonight in New York, and um, I had to miss that. As I said, I'm at a different event right now with my with my guys. It's a cannabis friendly event. Okay, okay, uh, okay. 
Yeah, my, <laughs> my, my boy Gardens by Gilf, as you can see, I'm, I'm showing him love and support. <laughs> Big ups. <laughs> so with that being said, um, are you signed to a label now? Like what's going on with you now? So right now, uh, well, I'm always straight up entertainment family, no matter what. I mean, it's, it's, it's embedded in my skin. You know what I mean? I've been original straight up entertainment family from day one. Mm -hmm. Um, but so, uh, right now I got a deal and it works with Sony Orchard for okay. distribution. Um, and, and currently I'm David James music. That's just what it is, you know? Mm -hmm. So that that's the entity, but you know, I keep the dizzy disaster. I really wanted to stay away from that. But mm -hmm. as far as, um, Google friendly dizzy disasters was working. And mm -hmm. so I, I, I just roll with it and, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Like I said, I just, I, me personally, I, this is how I see it. I, I haven't really released anything seriously. Mm. I got my, my first mixtape that I dropped with um, Ronji, and then that was about it. And, and I didn't really push that, so I'm going to actually re-release that. <laughs> okay, all right. So then what you got coming out? Like, what's good? So the official disaster volume one is going to be set for re-release um, in, in conjunction with the David James Music Project um, in June 3rd, which is on a Friday, if I'm not mistaken, June 3rd. Um, so I, for, the, for the moment, I've released Picasso, which is a single for everybody to enjoy. Um, it's, it's on all streaming platforms. It's been running on Shade 45 constantly, getting a lot of love. So I'm very highly appreciative of that. It was just, that was an accidental um, release too. So that's even more phenomenal. Um, but I'm working on an album with Rusty Jux right now that I produced. Um, we're almost done with it. We don't even have a name developed, but um, I got, we got tracks with uh, Rockness Monster on it. Uh, Chris Rivers, uh, Big Punt's son, Fire. Um, Big Shug, we got, uh, who else is on that joint? <laughs> um, mad people actually is so it's, it's a lot it's a lot of work being put into it right now um i do got an unreleased track with sean price that i'm like gonna, uh, i'm the, debating on either putting it on, on the jokes project or my own you know see if we do last both on it as a bonus hidden track <laughs> <laughs> well i heard um, that picasso that picasso go hard it's definitely reminiscent to old school hip-hop for sure yeah it's a bop so what was the creative process behind that? So I um if so my last project I, I, the with the official disaster I got a song called Lyrical Exercise, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. so see with me is I, I I feel like I like to be a rapper's rapper you know what I mean like I, I just I'm, I love bars you know I, I could do adaptive to all but I I I spit what I like to listen to mm -hmm. and I just like to listen to straight Nestle Crunch bars like. <laughs> You know, I, I'm I'm half Puerto Rican, half French, Irish, and so like you know, when I be with my family, they like, oh, Yo, you don't listen to no Spanish music and none of that shit. You just listen to all that, all that hip hop, that rap, blah blah blah. I'm like, I, I'm sorry, there ain't no no meet I'm, no meet our mommy music going on in here. Like I, I'm rough, rugged, and raw. You better get the fuck out of here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said, don't even try me with that, okay? So, yeah, nah. <laughs> if there was a female MC, who would you like to share the stage with that could match your bars? Listen, you, first and foremost, that there, there's female MCs that I feel that are that are doper than me. I'm still a student to the craft, so shit. There's, but I, I you know, there's one in, um, in particular. First and foremost, Beans is I, I, I love her. Let me tell you, first and foremost, like. <laughs> Man, yo, that's like the homie right there. I would love to work with her. Um, and Daze Lynn, I believe that is her name. She, I've been hearing some bars from her. She did something over my dude, Stand the Man's um, production on a cypher. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Stand the Man. But um, let me tell you, that was fire. So Daze Lynn, um, I would say it, but, but if I had a choice, like artist right now, female, I would definitely say Beans. <laughs> okay. All right. Y'all gonna tear it up. So now this is this is my last I know you got other things going on. So I have two questions. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Passion or purpose. 
What's my passion? Is this is this journey passion or purpose? I feel like it'd be a combination of both, actually, truth be told, because I I feel like first and foremost, it, 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 with with doing my music and my and my it's it's a first and foremost a therapy for me, and I love doing it. But I feel like I've been blessed to be able to do it so well that it should be shared with the world. Right. So that's more or less the per- purpose portion of it. Whereas the passion, it's like it's something that's in my, it's it's in my, I feel it, it's in my DNA. Like if, if I'm if I'm shopping, like like let's say I'm all the way in the damn Berkshires or something, and I'm like, yo, I gotta kill time real quick. Let me stop in a Marshalls. Oh, shoot. I see a Marshalls. Let me see what they got up in here. And I'm here, and then I walk in, and I hear some, like, some country shit, like, I've been paying close attention to your details, details. And I'm like, I'm in there shopping, and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Yo, I could take that sound, and if I slow it down, like, 10 decibels, I could put an ill ass dope slap drum and I'm be, I've been paying close attention to your boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? And it, it comes out fire. <laughs> well, okay. that's how my brain works. Nah, you're creative. That's just what it is. So, like, and what else are you doing? You're doing music. So, what other things do you have going on? Um, I'm working on an album with Dirty Klansman right now, Darts. Um, I'm producing all that project as well, too. Shout out to my Dirty Klansman family, Dungeon Master, uh, Hispanic, Danny MacGyver. There's so, so many of the names. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's that's being worked on. Uh, the Rusty Jugs, my project. Um, that's I'm trying to stay busy. Okay, okay, okay. Busy. So I did read on one of the sites that you were going through a name change. So you're not using David. You're using your your traditional stage name. Yeah, yeah. Dizzy Disaster. I mean, David James is more or less when I produce. That's my David James okay. music. That's going to be that entity. Um, I try to separate it in that aspect because this is the way I see it. Like, I want... I'm, I'm, again, I'm a music connoisseur, so I would love in the future to work with all types of artists. Like, I want to hear mad different artists. I, I talked to Nems already, so I know what it takes to work with him. So, they, you know, like a bunch of stuff. So I got I got tracks with Freeway. I, I got a lot of different beats uh, being put out there. I want to hear different artists on. So at the end of the day, if you have an artist with the, with an upcoming name, it's Dizzy Disaster, and then you hear the type of content I'm putting out as a rapper, some of these people will take it like as like I ain't trying to fuck with him, you know, competition types. You know what I mean? Right, right, but if you get a if you get a beat from David James music and it is fu- now you like you listen to it, you're like, yo, that's bang and saying, let me drop something to it. Boom, boom. Yo, David James is dizzy. Does that? Oh, yo, but that be five, whatever. So I, I really, you know what I'm saying? Right, it's, it's, right. It's, so it's and plus I'm a Gemini. Right. I'm a Gemini, so it works. You know what I mean? It's, it's oh, double. <laughs> He said he a Gemini at works. Okay, whatever. <laughs> but you know, you fire though. It's not, it's it's without question. Like, number one, being signed to Sony Orchard, that speaks highly for itself because Rob not gonna sign no whack artist. That that I know. But yeah. <laughs> but even still, you know your talent. So how easy, like rhyming poems, like how does all of that going to hip-hop um it's it's just it's, it's paying homage because like coming up when all right so when i was a kid I, I i watched like i was lucky enough to have been around dudes that like my mom's husband um pops is how i grew up knowing him as he's from straight bronx new york so i'm in the crib and he's listening to artists like nine Rapper nine and shit, you know what I mean? Like old school, not tech nine, rapper nine. You know what I'm saying? Dude only came out with two albums because he's so belligerent that back in the day they tried to ban him from radio. Uh, people don't even know these things, you know what I mean? Like, and, and just like straight Wu Tang, like he introduced me to the Wu Tang and shit. And for me to have been, and wow. so for me to have been, have been next to Capadonna, like yo, Cap, yo, you mind speaking to my my mom's husband real quick so he because you know feel good, whatever shit like that, like that's all blessings, yo, you know. Yeah. But 
it's it's all in how you how you how you uh, uh, attain it right it's like one day at a time type of shit okay and uh, for real these are my last two questions oh hey um, take as much as go ahead this is easy and this is not about rap but it is about what's going on right now with the whole will smith or ordeal <laughs> Number one, um, you know, because the toxic masculinity has been thrown out there and blah, blah, oh. blah. My question is, even after the slap that could be heard around the world, do you think that his punishment was fair? I mean, I mean, to, yes, to an extent, because I think I think that they felt <laughs> obligated to, to reprimand him. Um, but at the end of the day, he should have also had recognized the scenario too, like, and and held himself to a higher level, I guess, a higher standard. But at the end of the day, I don't know the situation, and nobody knows the situation because I've been in a situation too where, like, I remember it was dumb early in the morning, and Shorty was drunk and arguing with the neighbor and then the neighbor's man was like yo i'm about to knock this this itch out and i said yo hold up bang i had to knock one boy out and it's like yo do you really want to do that in the morning but it's like sometimes you know if you really did for that woman you say like, yo but again in a scenario in a situation i feel like maybe perhaps it could have been handled in a different manner but who's to say that none of that wasn't done for purposes such as this relevancy and publicity <laughs> right well i don't know <laughs> Jeffrey, i don't know about his sake i was thinking it might have been a like a conversation that was had and if you do this x y and z it's gonna be i'll tell time. you one thing i tell you one thing it definitely had to have been something that led up to it as well right. because you if you've known each other for that long they've been in the industry that long together like you know each other's power you know what the scenario is where you're at Mm -hmm. live on tv <laughs> something had to had led up for that smack like yo that's it this this motherfucker asked for it now <laughs> <laughs> i done told this motherfucker now because right. <laughs> how many situations yeah, would have been in already where he should have been slapped the motherfucker that's why i'm like mm. So that's my take on that. <laughs> oh, well, my take is these doggone hard bottoms would have been sliding across that floor because you're not just going to slap me on national TV. We're going to be doggone moving furniture, okay? Like I'll tell you one thing, though. i tell you one thing, though. Jada was definitely surfboarding that yeah. after, so <laughs> she best yeah. to have it. <laughs> Let me tell you, that whole situation, I just can't even, that red table talk, I'm like, no, you just trying to capitalize off the stupidity. Like, he's got obviously anger issues from something that you did earlier on and he's just still trying to prove himself so i do believe it's part misplaced anger and then the other thing is it's on site like you say this you do that it's on site because they have been messing mm -hmm. with the boy i'm talking about the boy like i know him like all night nitpicking with them all night with the jokes but at the same time i do think it was misplaced anger because you just don't get to that level of success on the oscars and and do that that's just nuts to me so no exactly yeah we, uh, this wig would have came off though straight up like I, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> this is my last question where can people follow you and download your music um Dizzy underscore disaster. I, it's, it's funny because we was on the way over here to this event and uh, me and my man Busted Fuse, he's a well-known producer as well too. I've done so many songs with him and that's what we were just saying on the way up. We were listening to a lot of the old jams. <clears throat> old jams. I'm like, yo, some of this shit I should re-record and re-release, yo. This is crazy. But um, yeah, so Dizzy Disaster on all platforms, D-I-Z-Z-Y. D I Z A S T A, um, dizzy underscore disaster for Instagram. Um, David James still on Facebook. I'm about to swap that, but mm -hmm. I do have a dizzy disaster uh, fan page and a like page. Um, so definitely check up on that. Uh, official disaster on Twitter and um, pretty much Google dizzy disaster. I got a lot of stuff everywhere on SoundCloud as well. 
check it out on SoundCloud, Spotify. I got well over a thousand monthly listeners, so you know. Building. I just checked you out. I, I just wanted you to say it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. You were bomb. I appreciate you even tapping in, although you got uh, some other things going on and just uh, speaking with me tonight. So thank you so much. Oh, sure. No, for sure. I appreciate it. Uh, definitely. And, and anything that you guys ever need, for sure. Right here. Let's go. All right. <laughs> I'm going to hit you up. Don't be surprised. <laughs> no, definitely. definitely. I put a laceration around your face so it's visible No open coffin or rock a scoping off them Tie a weight around your ankles, throw you off a boat in Boston But I'd rather smoke this awesome No jokes, but I off your boss, man For thinking he could fuck with a real nigga, proceed with caution Stone cold like my name's Steve Austin A crazy individual that'll chop your body up into portions And break nature, bitch, falsehood with two in a portion Nigga, what?